It's Women's History Month, and as we continue to celebrate the accomplishments women have made throughout history tonight, we take a look at the impact black women have made on mental health. This Self Care Saturday on BNC, Dr. Jessica Smedley explains how black women help lead the way in teaching self care. Well, Dr. Jessica Smedley, thank you so much for joining us for Self Care Saturday. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So, you know, Dr. Smedley, we women, I always say girl power, it's Women's History Month. Um, we have made a tremendous impact on a number of different fields. But let's talk about mental health and wellness. How have, you know, Black women made it such a tremendous impact on that industry? Absolutely. So what we know about uh, psychology right now is that 4% of psychologists are Black and an even smaller amount are women. But we are seeing lots of us rise to the occasion. Uh, many of us are spending time in writing and contributing to research. Many of us are advocating for policy change for our communities, uh, for access to mental health. Many of us are advocating on even local levels, providing services, creating community support groups that are accessible, uh, making mental health uh, a normal topic per se. So using mediums like social media, blogs, uh, making it every day and contributing to even pieces, you know, such as this and making sure the conversations are continuing. So there are so many different, you know, ways that uh, we are showing up in this time right now. It's really exciting. And why is it so important to have people who look like us in those roles? Representation is so important uh, to our overall confidence, our self-esteem, our healing. Uh, historically, we know that medicine and mental health have not been safe places for Black people, for people of color. And so now that we are seeing our numbers begin to rise and, and the interest grow in the field, it's so important that we help other people see that mental health is actually something normal that we should do and that we're worthy of doing because we need to heal. We need to recover and take care of ourselves and to target some of that generational trauma that we've been carrying for so long. Yeah. And how does that relate to self-care? When you look at, you know, me being able to go to a Black therapist, I have my own personally. Um, how does that like work well with you just kind of instilling in you how to do self-care? Absolutely. It's just an automatic boundary. It's saying that I'm going to take out this amount of time for my life once or twice a month, however often you see your therapist, and learn techniques to cope, learn techniques to build healthy routines and habits. Make sure that you're engaging in healthy relationships and taking care of your body, your mind, your spirit, all of those things. So it's a trickle down effect that just bleeds into all of our domains of life. Yeah. And what does that look like for us when ultimately we're able to, you know, take the time out for self-care, um, visit with a, a therapist or however else we decide to do those routines? What does that look like? Sure. So it can be, uh, like I said, meeting with someone weekly. Right now, I'm even still virtual in my practice. Uh, and so taking time to explore maybe what past relationships, stressors, or uh, issues that there have been, helping to develop insight, helping to develop new ways of understanding uh, and new ways of self-acceptance so that relationships going forward feel healthier, more fulfilling, develop, developing healthier boundaries, uh, new ways of engaging. And like you were saying earlier, taking care of ourselves first. Those priorities are so important. Is there anything that, you know, Black women in particular that you would make a recommendation for that you suggest that we do um, for our self-care? We need to give ourselves a lot more grace than we do. Uh, I hear a lot of Black women tend to be apologetic for the way that we show up or um, we're not good at celebrating ourselves internally. Um, and so we downplay our achievements or we are critical on you know, achievements rather than celebrating or owning our greatness. Uh, and so I think that how we speak to ourselves and that internal narrative is so important uh, specifically for us because of, again, as I was saying earlier, our past are so uh, traumatic and we carry so much pain, but because of that, we have to learn how to heal and change that narrative. And it really starts inside. Yeah. And what's been some of the things that you've kind of experienced in, with your clients that you've spoken to um, with some of the weight that they carry? 
everything, relationship, uh, uh, stress, uh, self-care stress, feeling that their responsibilities are spread because they don't have, you know, the support maybe, um, feeling that not only do I not have time to take care of myself, but it's also my partner or my children or, you know, work, especially in a pandemic. And so just not feeling like they have um, ideal resources that would be helpful uh, to really just manage in a, in a more effective and healthy way. And what message would you send to them with this being Women's History Month and we having to, you know, make sure we are celebrated? What would you say? To make sure that we take a step back and to look at the things that we are doing. What are the things that we do have uh, to reframe and to think about the resources and excellence that we see around us every day? Uh, and again, that's why changing that narrative is so important, because there are so many things that we overlook that we don't give ourselves credit for. Mm -hmm. And lastly, what is your self-care tip of the week? What should people be doing? <laughs> you know, I'm going to go with exercise. The weather is changing. Uh, I'm here in D.C. And so the, today's the first day of spring. So I'm going to say go outside, exercise, get some fresh air. I don't care if it's walking, jogging, dancing, jump roping, just something physical to get that heart rate up and those endorphins pumped and stress hormones decreasing, smiling, <laughs> getting that vitamin D, all that outside. Stuff. 